We all know that Hermione Granger was the cleverest witch of her year, or possibly any year, when she attended Hogwarts. What did our favorite Hogwarts high achiever do after graduation? Did spending her final year sleeping in the woods hunting horcruxes slow her down? No, no. Before we begin, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss a video. Without further ado, here are some fascinating things that happened to Hermione Granger after the conclusion of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I see that your friend Ronald has saved you the trouble of opening your chocolate frog. Chocolate frog. In the very first Harry Potter book, we were introduced to the marvelous magical treat, chocolate frogs. If eating a seemingly alive chocolate frog isn't appealing, well, at least you could collect one of the cards. Each treat comes with a card with information about a famous witch or wizard. For her brave actions in Deathly Hallows, Hermione Granger was featured on her very own chocolate frog card. We're sure out of all the honors she received for her heroics, this one was the most meaningful. Hermione's accomplishments are so impressive, we're surprised she was given only one chocolate frog card. Hermione Jean Granger. I leave my copy of the Tales of Beedle the Bard. The Tale of Beedle the Bard. In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Hermione received a book entitled The Tale of Beedle the Bard from the late Albus Dumbledore. Eventually, we learn that this book is an important clue that Hermione deciphers in order to track down Voldemort's horcruxes. We see her translate the ancient runes to read the story of the three brothers, but it turns out she didn't stop there. Eventually, she would go on to translate the book in its entirety, using the knowledge of ancient runes she picked up from her time at Hogwarts. And Ron thought that class would never be useful in real life. Excuse me, I have to go and vomit. Rowling's Reaction Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has become as famous as the successful franchise she created. She frequently interacts with her fans and gives us plenty of insider information. One thing we were shocked to learn is that Rowling regretted having Ron and Hermione end up together. She admits that, like the rest of us, she ended up shipping certain characters and the Ron-Hermione pairing was one of her favorites. However, she believes that it's Harry and Hermione that should have wound up in a relationship with one another. Even J.K. Rowling seems to have it out for poor Ron Weasley. Oblivion. Memories. Whether she's your favorite character or not, there's no denying that Hermione is incredibly impressive. She frequently uses magic far above what someone her age should be capable of, and we see this in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Knowing that she has to go off and fight Voldemort, she augments her parents' memories. They soon believe they're Wendell and Monica Wilkins, a childless couple on holiday to Australia with no knowledge about the wizarding world. This was an impressive yet heartbreaking feat, but thankfully, Hermione was able to reverse the spells once Voldemort was defeated. Will either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled? Education. Over the course of the series, her peers, and Ron especially, were in awe of Hermione's dedication to her schoolwork. As thanks for the whole saving the world from Voldemort thing, Harry, Ron, and Hermione were given the option to just take a pass on the whole school thing. Seems fair. While Harry and Ron were thrilled, Hermione was determined to finish her career at Hogwarts. She wanted to get her newts and wouldn't let anything stand in her way. She may be bad at divination, but Hermione is great at every other subject she attempts. Marriage. During Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, we see Ron and Hermione finally get together. Many of us have been predicting and hoping for this ending, but wondered what would happen to this pair once the book ended. Eventually, Hermione and Ron ended up tying the knot. Their relationship has always been a bit complicated because of their vastly different personalities, and marriage didn't change this. Although it was challenged at times, Hermione remained dedicated to her relationship with Ron throughout it all. J.K. Rowling even suggested that at one point the pair might benefit from some professional marriage counseling. <laughs> Wedding. Like many young girls, Hermione Granger may have dreamed of her wedding day, or at least enjoyed planning the practical aspects of it, but we later learn that their wedding night may have left a lot to be desired. Ron confides to Harry that he had a few too many butter beers, and who knows what else over the course of his wedding day, classic Weasley. In fact, because he was so highly intoxicated, Ron doesn't remember his wedding night one bit. That's not exactly the fairy tale romance most of us dream of, but at least Ron seemed truly remorseful for disappointing Hermione so badly. Back? Yeah. Jumper. Yeah. Children. Even though she may not have had the wedding night of her dreams, Hermione and Ron did somehow manage to have two children together. Not a boy, Weasley. Their names are Rose and Hugo Granger Weasley, and of course, they attended Hogwarts just like their parents. In addition to their own children, she also has the role of godmother to the eldest child of Harry and Ginny Potter. She and Ron are godparents to James Sirius, and that's almost as good an accomplishment as having your own chocolate frog card. Hmm? Hermione may have grown up as an only child, but she did marry into the Weasley family, and that means tons of kids running around. Tons of redheaded kids. Please! Please stop it! Please! No enough! Spew. 
Sometimes at Hogwarts, it seems as if there was nothing that Hermione couldn't accomplish. But then we saw her ability to create acronyms. Yeah. During Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Hermione started the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Warfare, otherwise known as SPEW. Despite the unpleasant name, Hermione's dedication to the cause didn't waver after she graduated from Hogwarts. She continued campaigning for the rights of underprivileged humanoid creatures such as house elves. We're sure this was made easier by the fact that house elves also fought in the Battle of Hogwarts. Are you sure that's a real spell? <laughs> well, it's not very good. Career Beginning at various times over the course of this series, Hermione expresses frustration with and disdain of the Ministry of Magic. Considering the ups and downs that Harry, Ron, and Hermione had to go through at various points, this isn't surprising. What shocked us more is that Hermione ended up working for them. When she was fresh out of Hogwarts, she got a position working for the Department for Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures. Considering her interest in Spew, this actually made perfect sense for her character. With her brains and grades, Hermione could have had any job she wanted, but of course, she wanted one where she could do some good. Leviosa, not Leviosa. Reform When Kingsley Shacklebolt first took over the Ministry of Magic, things were hectic to say the least. Cleaning up after Voldemort would be bad if it wasn't for all the policies he and his followers had changed during their reign. The Ministry of Magic needed a major overhaul, and Hermione and Kingsley worked together to bring this about. They eradicated the old laws which heavily favored pure-blood witches and wizards. This was no easy task, but they managed to bring equality and justice to the citizens of the wizarding world and change things for the better. You're honestly the most wonderful person I've ever met. Accomplishments during the reign of Kingsley Shacklebolt, with the assistance of Hermione, many things in the Ministry of Magic changed. The Dementors, which had long guarded Azkaban, were dismissed, and their use as Ministry instruments was banned. Probably makes sense. If you think about it, having a bunch of torturous, soul-stealing monsters on the payroll was pretty morally dubious in the first place. Hermione also saw many of her friends being promoted, such as when Harry was appointed to the head of the Auror Department. Things were definitely changing in the Ministry of Magic, and Hermione was there just at the right time. I think we had a bad influence on her. Minister of Magic After years of working diligently for the Ministry of Magic, everything paid off for Hermione. The Minister of Magic is an elected position, and Hermione decided to run for office. To the surprise of absolutely no one, she won and earned the title of Minister of Magic. Sure, the job can come with a ton of responsibilities, but who can handle it better than Hermione? Since she had long criticized the past government officials, this meant it was time for her to really show the wizarding world how things should be done. After defeating Voldemort, filling out paperwork, and presiding over the Wizengamot, probably felt like a walk in the park. When in doubt, I find retracing my steps to be a wise place to begin. Time Turners In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, we see Hermione take her dedication to education way too far. She obtains special ministry permission to use a Time Turner, a device which lets her travel through time just so she can go to more classes. That's such a Hermione thing to do, but she soon learned that even she has her limits. However, the Time Turners came back to haunt her after Hogwarts, and she was forced to deal with some that were outside of ministry control. And just like the one she used during her time at Hogwarts, this one caused a ton of trouble. Hogwarts. What a pathetic excuse for a school. Alternate reality. Despite all the amazing things that happen in the Harry Potter series, there will always be a ton of what ifs. However, thanks to Albus Potter and Scorpius Malfoy, we got to see what some of these futures would look like. In one alternate reality, Hermione and Ron didn't end up married to one another. Instead of becoming Minister of Magic, she found herself working Snape's dream job as the defense against the dark arts teacher at Hogwarts. But far from being happy to be back at Hogwarts, Hermione was a jaded and bitter professor. We have mixed feelings on Hermione suddenly being mean without Ron in her life, but thankfully, that only happened in this alternate version of reality. When are you going to get into your head? We're in this together. Losing battle. In another alternate reality created by Albus and Scorpius, Voldemort defeated Harry Potter and now rules the wizarding world. In this reality, we see that Hermione is now in hiding along with Ron Weasley, Severus Snape, and what little remains of Dumbledore's army. Upon hearing that this didn't have to occur, Hermione worked with Scorpius and Albus to make things right. Although this version was definitely tragic, at least Hermione and Ron did end up falling in love. Of course, right afterwards, they were forced to sacrifice themselves to the Dementors, but thankfully, that all got put right at the end. That was bloody brilliant. Oh, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. Parent-Teacher Conference in the canon version of reality, Professor McGonagall is the new headmistress of Hogwarts. Now, Hogwarts may be a magical school filled with moving staircases, talking portraits, and actual ghosts, but it's still a school. Understandably, McGonagall wasn't thrilled with two of her students meddling with the space-time continuum and called in a meeting. Hermione, Ron, Harry, Ginny, and Draco once again found themselves in trouble at Hogwarts. Only this time it was because of their children. The parents were forgiving, but McGonagall, strict as always, gave them a stern talking to about traveling through time. Harry is under the impression Draco Malfoy is now a Death Eater. 
Old wounds. One extremely triumphant moment of the Harry Potter series was when Hermione punched Draco Malfoy right in the face. Okay, we know that violence isn't cool, but in our defense, young Draco was really annoying. But as adults, Draco did mature, and the two were able to put their past grievances behind them. When the whole Time Turner situation got out of control, Hermione and Draco were among those who helped make things right. Hermione, being Hermione, wasn't afraid to take charge, and Draco was amused to be willingly taking orders from Hermione Granger. You're a little scary sometimes. How do you think Hermione's life panned out after her time at Hogwarts? Do you think that she and Ron bring out the best in each other? Let us know in the comment section below and subscribe to CBR so you don't miss out on any of our great videos. Thanks for watching.